Hey guys, so welcome back. Now we're actually going to get into solving these uh, linear constant coefficient homogeneous ordinary differential equations. So this is kind of like to ease you in to the problem solving part of this chapter and we'll start building. You'll see in these next like three or four sections we're going to build up to what is the, I guess, depending on your professor, uh, the longest problem that you'll do in this class which is variation parameters. But in order to do that we have to solve the simplest cases first. So let's do that. So, we want to solve a y prime prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to zero. And so, how are we going to do this? Well, um, without hand waving too much, let's say we're going to make a guess, right? That our um, our solution is going to be of the form y of t is equal to e to the lambda t. Because taking derivatives of this will give you, we'll just pop out lambdas in front, right? Derivative of e lambda t is just lambda e lambda t. Double derivative of that is just lambda squared e lambda t. So if we plug this in to our equation right here, let's see what happens. So a y prime prime. So y prime prime of this, actually I'll just calculate the derivatives here to make my life easy. y prime of t is lambda e lambda t. And then y double prime of t is equal to lambda squared e lambda t. Okay, so now let's plug everything in. So this will become a lambda squared e to the lambda t plus b lambda e to the lambda t plus e to the lambda t has to equal zero. Now, if your algebra teachers uh, were successful, you should be able to see that you can pull out an e lambda t here. So e lambda t times a lambda squared plus b lambda plus, oh, I forgot the c right here, plus c is equal to zero, right? And then because this can never be zero, we can divide by it, okay? So that means a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c is equal to zero. Now take a look at this. This is second degree, right? This is second degree polynomial. Remember earlier when I told you you needed two linearly independent uh, solutions in order to solve this differential equation? So if we could find lambda that satisfies this a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c for any arbitrary a, b, and c that are real numbers, we're, get, we're guaranteed to get two solutions, right? So that should kind of hint at you that maybe solving this will give us the general solutions to our a y prime prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to zero. And so I want to make a note, this is called the characteristic equation. And it's very important. You'll probably do many of these in this course. Great. And so that's what I just stated. And now this is just simple quadratic formula, right? We're, we're guaranteed that we're going to get two roots, and the roots of this are just negative b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and then the same thing except there's a, a negative sign between the radical and the b, right? And so from these roots, we have three scenarios, right? This discriminant, this very special discriminant here of b squared minus 4ac, which is up here, right? If it's greater than zero, we're guaranteed that whatever inside of here is going to be a positive number, right? So the square root of a positive number will give us a positive number. And therefore, uh, this values lambda 1 and lambda 2 aren't going to be the same. And lambda 1 and lambda 2 are going to be real because whatever is inside the radical is going to be real. So that's good. If it's equal to 0, then because the only difference between these two are the plus and the minus sign, uh, having the 0, this equal to 0 means that these both are going to be the same. And also, because it's zero, it's not imaginary, so those are going to be real. Now, where it gets interesting, if it's less than zero, then we're guaranteed that whatever is inside of here, the square root of a negative number is going to lead to something imaginary. So our lambda one is going to be written in the form of alpha plus i beta, and then alpha minus i beta. And it'll always be like that. They should be complex conjugates, right, from algebra? Cool. And then so from here, if they're not equal, then we can just plug them into here. Remember, our guess was e to the lambda t. So now I have my two linearly independent solutions. You can do the wrong scheme to prove it to yourself. It will be c1 e lambda 1t plus c2 e lambda 2t. That's great. For this case, we don't have uh, another lambda, right? So in order to get rid, to make another linearly independent solution, 
we multiply by t here, right? And so this is going to be our solution. Pretty straightforward. And then for this third one here, um, if you're curious as to how we get this, and as a double e, I, you know, I use this equation almost every day. And so, if you're curious, and if you've never seen this before, this is probably one of the most useful equations of all time. You can prove it to yourself by just plugging in these alpha plus or minus i betas for theta up here. And then you'll get, if you want to take the real parts of your solutions, you'll get what's exactly down here. But that's okay. You don't need to do that. You can just believe me that this is going to be e to the alpha t times c1 cosine beta t plus c2 sine beta t. Cool. Now, let's apply this. Let's just do a simple, quick problem. So we want to find the general solutions of the following OD. So we're now solving problems, which is great. We have y prime prime minus 2y prime plus 2y is equal to 0. So first things first, and I tell my students this, just lambdas. Just substitute everything for lambda, right? So y prime prime equates to lambda squared. Minus 2y prime equates to minus 2 lambda. And then plus 2y is plus 2, not plus 2 lambda. That's a classic mistake. Watch out for that. And that will result here, right? Now, what do you do here? Uh, if you can't see it, uh, like the roots of this, just go ahead and use quadratic formula. That's totally fine. So from here, we'll get minus b, which will just be 2, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, c, which is 2, all over 2a, so just 2. And this will be lambda 1 and 2, right? Whatever these are. And then, so this comes down to be 2 plus or minus, uh, this is minus 4, right, over 2. And then that yields 2 plus or minus, square root of negative 4. That's 2i. It's not 4i. So be very careful. Over 2, and this is just 1 plus or minus i. Cool. So that is in the form of alpha plus or minus i beta, which is, one, which is one of the cases that we had above, right? So if we use our formula, then we know that this has to be written as e to the alpha t times arbitrary constant c1 cosine beta t plus c2 sine beta t, right? And we have everything here. Our alpha in this case is 1, and our beta in here is this implied 1. So just plug everything in. So our final answer is yt is equal to e to the t times c1 cosine of t plus c2 sine of t. And there we go. That's all that's needed. So it just really, this, this method is just turning differential equations into an algebra problem. And then from that, classifying into which of the three cases it is. And if you do a bunch of these, you'll be able to just kind of see the solution. Uh, after a while, and then just writing the solution down. Great. So the next section, we're going to start applying this to the uh, mass oscillator problem, which I derived a couple videos ago. And we're also going to look into sinusoids, which are just sines and cosines. So stay tuned for that.